Page 8, Dance of the Hobgoblins. This should be interesting. On page 7, they talk about ledger lines. Have we not had ledger lines before? I mean, in a sense, we have because you've had a ledger line almost from the beginning. Middle C is on a ledger line. You see a staff is five lines, and the notes on it looks like treble clef, the staff. The bottom line is an E, so the space below that is a D. The top line is an F, the space above that is a G, so the treble clef only covers this range of notes. And we've got a lot more than that, and the same problem with the bass clef. So we add little lines above or below the staff to add more notes. Those are called ledger lines, and middle C is on a ledger line. You've had it all along. Well, now they're introducing some new notes for you. In my opinion, just my opinion, you should go ahead and eventually memorize the notes up to three ledger lines above or below either staff, treble or bass. Because when you start getting more than three ledger lines, sometimes it's hard to tell exactly how many ledger lines there are. You have to count them. And, but you can usually see three ledger lines and know them instantly, what they are. You, you can tell there's three of them without having to count them. And that's why I say memorize up to three. After that, you may have to count them to learn what they are. So that's your newest and latest challenge. Good luck. In Dance of the Hobgoblins, we get this in the left hand. And they're suggesting, for the time being, go ahead and write in the letter names of the ones you're not sure about. And that's not a bad idea. But only write in the letter names of the ones you need. Don't automatically write them all in. Well, you know an E in, in bass clef is one ledger line. And they go every other note. So then a C is two ledger lines. And that's kind of important. Two ledger lines is, a, is like a, an important situation. Just memorize because that's a C. Because you remember middle C is in between. One ledger line in between them. Well... Two ledger lines below bass is a C, and two ledger lines above treble is a C. So it's like, oh, okay. So get that, and then three ledger lines would be an A, and then the spaces are the other things in between. So if you want to write, it's like three ledger lines at the beginning in the left hand, that's an A, and then a B, and then a C. If you need to write in those note names to memorize them, to help you out, that's fine, go for it. But Memorize them. Know what they are. Now, for this dance, I'll come back to the word dance. That's important. Common time or 4-4 four, four time. Three sharps. So this is fun. We're in the key of A major. So make sure you can do the A major scale at least two octaves up and down. I won't mention the F sharp minor scale right now because it also has three sharps. But at least get the A major scale learned. Right hand first, let's just get the, I don't think the rhythm's a problem, you just got a bunch of quarter notes and eighth notes or whatever, so it's here, you're down here, and three sharps. Now, if you knew the scale, you would know what black keys are in this, because you'll learn which black keys are in that key by doing the scale. So it's here, three. So one and two and, one and. Two ledger lines below, that's fine. And you do that some more. Let's go down to the third line. Please don't read finger numbers. I used to do that when I was like, I'd read the finger numbers to tell me what they are. We don't need all these finger numbers. All we needed was at the beginning to tell you where the hand is. We don't need any of these other finger numbers they provided. Oh. So take a pencil and scr scrub them out if you have to, but don't read finger numbers. Top of page nine. You're here. And D sharp now. And then a D natural. They don't need the natural sign. It's a D natural anyway, but there's no harm in having it there, so okay. And then we do that. Last line at the bottom. It's an A and an E. A couple of times. And then end it up. Left hand. Well, you're way down here. If you have a short keyboard, just go as low as you can go. Just start with the lowest A you have. Otherwise, we're here. In this position. 
and it's just quarter notes. I wish they wouldn't put these finger numbers in. I think that's a real mistake. Please don't read finger numbers. You only need it at the beginning to tell you where the hand is. Let's go over to page 9. The first line... what you were doing. Go down to the third line. Three, one, two, one. It's an F natural because there's an F sharp in the key signature. Rest and then a two on. The idea of that two on is important. Please do that. I like that. And then at the bottom it's an A and an E together. Okay, you got it. Put the hands together slowly. Let's go to top of page 9, up here. Remember the accidental applies from that point on to the rest of the measure? So you say, well if I already had a D sharp up here, why do I need a D sharp here? It's in the same measure. And the answer is because each staff is independent as far as notation goes. So if I didn't have a D sharp in that bottom staff, I would play a D natural there because it's, it doesn't follow the accidentals in any other staff. It has to have its own. So there. So. Okay. You go through and learn it. And if it helps you to say the name of the note for a while, A, E, B, E, C sharp, so forth, for a while, just learn these notes. It's important. You're going to get them over and over and over from time to time, so it comes in handy. Once you can do that, no hesitations, then put in the staccatos. I'm going to hinge at the wrist on the staccato short. Now that's connected. But that isn't. And that's tricky to do. Well, you can practice this kind of thing when you do the scale. When you're practicing the A major scale, practice it staccato. And practice one hand staccato, one hand legato. Him. You don't go that fast, obviously. My point is, you practice all this tricky stuff with the scale. That's why I don't use exercises per se. I, I don't need them because the scales in the arpeggios provide me all the music I need to practice all these technical exercises for the most part. Some of the rhythm ones get a little different, but yeah, for the most part. Now, on this staccato technique, finger plucking. Except the thumb. The thumb is sideways. It can't pluck because it plucks sideways. It's got to go up and down. You're on the keys and I just, at the, here I am using finger muscles, not weight. It's finger. So you practice this when you do the A major scale. Make them short. One of the techniques used in staccato playing. There's different ones. And, and this one is used, see the, the softer you get, the smaller muscles you want to use. You have better control on the smaller muscles, finer, smaller movements. So we use the fingers for the really soft stuff. And then whenever you get loud, if you want to use like over on page 9, third line down, you go up to loud. You want to start doing that, I don't recommend it. I think it's easier to keep the same, but just keep in mind it's louder. So you Otherwise, yeah, throughout finger staccato. So we're putting in the staccato now. You have accents there in the third line. A little extra oomph. Just the right hand, not the left.
it. So put in the accents and the staccatos and the slurs. You got all that. Then we add the dynamics. As to the melody, which in this piece is the right hand. Soft, very soft. You're going to go up to soft and back down. Now, I went a little loud, but that, that's the point. Keep the left hand in the background as best you can. And this can be difficult because on a piano, the lower you go, the louder it gets. So to keep this... Keep this, keep right down on the keys. Don't go a lot of this here. Maybe finger staccato is better here rather than wrist. Finger staccato, just pluck the keys. Try that. You can do that in both hands. Again. Go up to moderately soft in the right hand. Keep the left hand very soft. That makes the accented note sort of a moderately loud. You just go up a little bit from where you are. And you're going to crescendo up to moderately loud. That makes the accented note loud. And then back down. And the third line down on page 9, you go up to loud. Keep the left hand soft. The last line, moderately loud with an accent, makes it loud. Soft. And how soft can you get it without using the soft pedal? That's cheating now. Got to learn to control it with the hands. The last two measures is very soft going down to super duper soft. Or it's almost like you're breathing on the keys. It's so soft. There's hardly anything there. Then once you get an idea of that, we add the speed, which is light and lively. Okay, hobgoblins apparently are light and lively. Well, the soft, the very soft stuff, that gives you the light. But think lively. Well, apparently we got some nice hobgoblins going on. You think of them dancing. Think of something dancing. Whatever you think a hobgoblin is, and it's very light. It's up to you. Speed-wise, what can you play accurately? Because how fast they're going to dance is up to you. You have to. It has to be what you feel light and lively is. And now I come back to the word dance that I mentioned earlier. A dance implies that people are moving to the music, dancing to the music. And when that happens, it's a very important to keep a steady beat. You don't slow down or speed up or nothing because you mess up the dancers and they don't like you anymore. So keep a steady beat at whatever. Nothing worse than an angry hobgoblin, I guess. I'm not sure. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the dynamics. I'm not going to play it super soft. I'm going to just play it. I will do the staccatos and stuff and the accents. I'll give us four counts. Let's just make sure we have the right notes and rhythms. One, two, ready, go.
rest. 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 <laughs> 